Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to go over in detail foods you cannot eat with braces. And I know, I mean, hey, I was a teenager who had braces, so I remember going in and them telling me this after they installed the braces and me rolling my eyes and thinking, oh, I'm going to eat everything I want. But as an orthodontist, we're on the other side. So let me first of all explain the why. Anytime you break a bracket, especially after the first month or so, you're basically adding one to two months to your treatment. Uh, initially, you know, if you break a bracket in the first stages when you're in the very light aligning wires, it's probably not going to really slow you down that much, except for the fact that your parents might have to, you know, schedule you for the morning time instead of the afternoon, take you out of school to get it fixed. You're going to get your doctor upset if you keep breaking things. And usually most doctors will give a couple freebies. And after that, there's a cost for broken brackets because this is all, for the most part, avoidable um, if you're more careful about what you eat and how you eat things. So, and of course, you know, there's one-offs. And one of the other clear misconceptions is that people say, oh, you know, it broke when I was sleeping. Well, that can happen, but what probably happened is that you were eating the day before something and you loosened the glue and then, you know, it just kind of finally fell out, you know, later. But the breakage occurred earlier, so you don't always know what caused it. But let's go over, and then lastly, I always like to give the 24 hour, and I actually have another really great video on breakage and how to know what caused the breakage by looking at the residual glue that's left on a tooth, and this video is more for doctors. But if you want to watch this video, it is an incredibly helpful flow chart that basically can take you back to what's causing the breakage in your practice. Because if you're constantly having breakage, sometimes it's not the patient. And this is how you can tell what it is. And, and for parents, it might be useful too, because you can help if you're getting fingers pointed at your child, you can help tell if that actually wasn't their fault or not. So um, if you want to watch this video within my YouTube channel, if you go to my YouTube channel, not YouTube in general, but Straight Smile Solutions YouTube channel, at the top right, kind of top right center, you're going to see a tiny magnifying glass. Click on that magnifying glass and put in the keyword broken bracket or bracket. and everything's going to come up. Probably broken bracket would be best um, or braces broken um, and it should come up and it really will help you guys. But let's talk specifically more about foods right now. So like I said at the beginning, it's not really what you eat, but it's how you eat things. So you can probably get away with eating almost everything on this list, but if you eat it a certain way, not, and not everyone has the discipline to eat things more judiciously, slower, neatly. So if you can't fall, you know, get around, do the workarounds, then don't bother trying, right? So I'm gonna kind of quickly go through this list and say the why behind it, but obviously anything chewy, sticky, or hard can break a bracket or bend wires. So nuts is probably a no-go, to be honest. So almonds is off. Gummy candies you can suck. Sugar, oh, who made this list? Sugar gum, oh yeah, any sugar gum, agreed. No sugar gum. You can have sugar less gum, like extra trident. I'm always fine with that, because it's very soft and it really doesn't break brackets but not the ones in a pop foil packet. So like your dentine ice, the ones that are real hard, that have a hard, that are like a chiclet, like a hard chiclet, that's a no-go. It's gonna be the soft ones in the foil wrapper, not the foil pop packet, if that makes a difference. Candy apples is a big no. Caramels you can suck. Cheetos you can suck if you just, you can't chew them. Um, the heck's a chew? I'm not sure what that is. It's chewy candies, you can suck those. Cornets is definitely a no. Crunchy chips is probably a no, unless you're eating the dust at the bottom of the chips. <laughs> so, like I said, there's a workaround. Same thing with cookies, you can smash them up. Um, pizza crust is probably a no. I mean, some pizza crust is soggy, but you know, you can eat the pizza as long as the crust isn't thick up to the crust and then you can bite into that. But if it's chewy, you're gonna need to get a knife and fork and cut tiny little bites. So Doritos is sorry, unless you're eating the dust is a no. French bread crust is a no. Frito, same thing. You gotta eat the powder at the bottom of the bag. Fruit roll ups, you can suck. Nerds, you can suck. Now and later, you can suck. Um, peanut brittle is a no. That's a no. Popcorn's fine as long as you don't get the kernels. The problem is when you're in the movie theater and you're just grabbing stuff, you get the kernels. So, I mean, if you can literally hold it up with your finger and pick popcorn by popcorn, it's fine. Sometimes the little pieces will get stuck in your wires. You just got to brush your teeth afterwards, but you have to be very careful to only take the fluffy pieces. Um, Skittles, you can suck. This is just more candy bars. Anything with nuts is a no-go. Tacos you can't bite into, so you can, um, it's better to do the soft tacos, um, or you can just eat the inside of the taco. Um, Jerky is going to be real hard. I think that's a no. 
And I think you guys are basically getting the idea. Anything that's a seed or a nut is a no. Anything that you can suck is fine. That's pretty much it. I mean, same thing with any type of sandwich. You could have like a soggy sandwich, like a tuna or a PB&J on sliced wheat. That's fine. You could eat that. But if it's on a hard, crispy French roll, that's a no. You're going to have to either cut it up or just eat the inside of it. So, you know, it's all about workarounds, learning to work around things. Some people's teeth, and especially if you've got teeth with fillings or, or um, crowns and stuff, things might not stick to them as well. So you're going to have to be a little bit careful. Some people have enamel that's not quite as good at sticking than other people's enamel. So um, also it depends on your bite. If you're always having breakage on the bottom arcs, that's telling me that perhaps your bite's a little bit deep and you might need like a bite turbo, a bite ramp, or a bite plate. So if it's always happening on the bottom, then that's something you want to ask your doctor about. Um, if it's happening within 24 hours of fixing, then it's probably the doctor's fault. And if you watch my other video, it'll go over all those diagnostics, how to tell basically whose fault it is. Um, and lastly, remember, a lot of times parents say, why do they break so easily? Well, we don't want the braces to be glued permanently in that, and we don't want them to break teeth when we take them off. So we're picking a glue that's glued very lightly on purpose so we don't damage your teeth when we need to take them off. So that's why. So it's meant to withstand light to moderate bite forces. There's some people that are just have heavier bite forces than other people, right? And those people are going to have to be a lot more careful than those people that don't. Another trick you can use is something called masseter Botox. Now, I wouldn't use Botox in a kid, but if you're an adult that for whatever reason didn't want Invisalign, which I don't understand the why behind that, because seriously, it's way better. <laughs> and it, it does do everything. So if someone tells you it doesn't, they're just not experienced move on, find somebody else. But anyways, if you are an adult and you're having issues breaking brackets, you can always get masseter or Botox, which is also really great for tooth grinding. Um, it also slims your face, there's a lot of benefits. Some dentists will do it, or you can go to your, any type of Botox place, and they'll ask, they'll do masseter or Botox. It's not cheap, you need like, goodness, at least 40 units every few months. That's very expensive, but it does help with breaking brackets. So, all right, hopefully this was helpful. Have a great day.